Hi, my name is Shalabi Yosoba and I want to tell you the testimony of how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. My story starts out in West Africa, which is where I was born, raised there in Nigeria. The last of five kids to my mom and dad. I grew up in a denominational church that my parents go to. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I had an awesome encounter where my mom took me to a crusade in Nigeria where the gospel was being preached and I remember even hearing an altar call and I was so compelled to go and respond to this altar call because my heart had been looking for God even from 10 years old. But I still didn't know that I could have a personal relationship with the Lord. When I was about 13, I moved from Nigeria to the United States with my mom and my sister. And already at that age, I had so many ungodly influences in my life. And my life just spiraled down in, in not a good direction because of hurts and because of ungodly influences and, and not having counsel in my life and not listening to the right people, to the right voices. I ended up in Austin, Texas to attend the University of Texas at Austin, here in Austin. And I was a freshman in UT when I was already into the partying life and the clubbing life. And I, I got tired of it very quickly because I thought to myself, if there isn't more to life than this, I don't know that I really want to keep doing this. So I knew there was more, but I couldn't get to it. I couldn't find healing for my heart. I couldn't find the answer to life or the purpose to life. And I remember one day, one of my older sisters invited me to church and I wasn't really excited about the invitation, but I was raised to go to church on Sunday. So I did it more because I knew that it was something that was right to do. And I started going to this spirit-filled church that my sister was attending. And the first few times I went, there wasn't really anything that stood out to me. But this one thing I noticed about people who attended that church is that they were happy. And I was such in a dark, broken place that I didn't even understand happiness. I couldn't understand why these people were so happy. I came to find out it's because they knew the Lord. They were saved. So one Friday night at the same church, the pastor there, who's an awesome man of God, he has an altar call. And I just knew that I was supposed to go up there. I don't know why, but I just had this impression that I needed to be on that altar call. And I remember there when I was giving my heart to Jesus, that I told him, I said, God, I don't even know what this salvation thing is. I don't know what it means to be born again. I hadn't been around that type of terminology, but I knew that it was the last straw for me, if you will. Well, from that day and a few days later that same week, I noticed a change in my heart. I noticed that that overwhelming compulsion to live a life of sin was gone. I was free. And I still didn't have any verbiage or understanding of what had happened to me, except that I knew that something powerful had happened. And from that time on, I went back to that church and signed up for every class that they had, the discipleship classes and new believers classes. I just wanted to get into the Word of God and find out as much as I could. Not too long after that, I was baptized by immersion into water, which was an awesome experience for me. Still hungry for God. I'm in this spirit-filled Pentecostal church and people having experiences with the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I hadn't even had any exposure to that prior to this, me being at that church. And I, I just was hungry for more of what they had in the Holy Spirit. And I remember one Sunday, the pastor there invited people up who wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I was there. And I was one of the people that they had to pray for continuously. But when I received the infill of the Holy Spirit, it changed my life. I couldn't believe that God had said yes to me because when I gave my heart to Jesus, I said yes to him. But when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I really felt like that was him saying yes to me just really changed my life, opened up the gifts of the Spirit of God in my life. And my pastor noticed that, and he gave me an opportunity to lead prayer for the church every Sunday. And I really felt like that grew me up in the things of God and things of the Spirit, now that I had this responsibility of leading God's people in prayer. And it really became a foundation in my life. And so till this day, I am grateful for the time um, that I got to spend there at Salvation Center and just the foundation I was giving in the Word of God, in prayer, in fasting, waiting on the Lord, it really um, established me and gave me a foundation um, 
in the Lord. At this time, I was at UT still, and I had such a passion for the Lord, I joined with a few of my friends who are also believers attending UT, and we started a Christian drama group, and we would go out into the middle of the campus and just have skits where we talk about Jesus. We would have uh, talent shows where we would invite students to attend and just, just creative ways of just getting this gospel of Jesus to people. That was our passion. And I remember one talent show we had, we invited the pastor to come give an altar call and two girls that were just happened to be walking by the room that we were having this talent show in, walked in and gave their lives to Jesus just because they happened to hear the music and all the celebration we were having. So that's been my story is that ever since I came on the Lord, I've just had this passion to tell people about Jesus. Um, God opened so many doors for me, even my own personal life. I graduated from the University of Texas and got a great job at a computer company in the information technology industry. And I really enjoyed um, what I was doing there as a profession. And, and while I was having that success, I was still really pressing into God at the church that I was participating in. And I got honored there to even be ordained as a deaconess, which means I was a minister, a servant in the house. And, for some, a young woman in her mid-30s, mid-20s at that time, um, it was just really amazing to, to have that opportunity to be honored. My heart was just, just, just blessed. And uh, I wanted more. I was still looking for more of God. I, I knew there was more and I was contending for it. In 2009, a friend of mine invited me to a conference to listen to a man named Pastor Bill Johnson. And uh, my life was totally changed by the message that he brought. He taught about the kingdom of God and the culture of the kingdom. And I saw him lead the body of Christ in praying for people in that room who were sick. And before we knew it, in a matter of seconds, there were people receiving miracles all over the room. And I was just so taken back by how easy it was. Like he, it was just so easy. And I think that I just had this preconceived notion that receiving the miraculous and walking the supernatural with God had to be challenging or hard, or you just have to really strive at it. And yet here was this man of God showing us that as the body of Christ, as members of the body of Christ, that we have inside of us this glory, this treasure, and we have the authority to release healing and walk in the supernatural, to experience heaven on earth as a lifestyle, as an everyday experience. After that conference, I told God, I was like, okay, God, if you just give me <laughs> a portion of what these folks are carrying in the kingdom of God, in the supernatural, you won't regret it because I'm going to run with this as far as you allow me to run with it. So that was 2009, and, and I really just decided to go full in into diving into kingdom kingdom culture and learning about revival culture and I remember I had another awesome encounter with God in 2010 when I attended a conference it was a student awakening at this church where God was visiting them and and in more he was visiting them more than what they were used to so what that means is they were having extended meetings just because the spirit of the Lord was really moving people were getting healed and Dozens of people were getting baptized every week because of this visitation of God. And I found out about it and I said, I'm just going to go. I'd never been there before, but I was hungry for the Lord. And God met me in that place. Um, I remember it was actually a young girl, I think maybe in their children's ministry, who prayed for me. It wasn't the pastor there or any of the leaders. It was just people hungry for God encountered the Holy Spirit. And I remember being in that conference at that church, God touching me and experiencing this supernatural joy of the Lord, this holy laughter that came upon me. And while I'm having this encounter with the Lord, I can't stop laughing. I'm like, God, this feels so amazing. Is this heaven? Am I dying? Like, what is awesome? This is this is amazing. Like, I might be taken up into heaven. He said, no, I'm just letting you experience a little bit of heaven. Just the fingertip of heaven is this ecstasy that's washing over you. And later on, the Lord really unpacked for me he explained to me really what was going on inside of me in that encounter that I was receiving just the baptism of the love of God. I walked away from that experience knowing that I'm so accepted by God, knowing that I'm approved by Him. I mean, it was a type of experience that from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt completely approved by God. And it changed my life forever. It changed my walk in life and my, my relationships with people because I no longer had controlling, feeling that experience of being controlled or having puppet screams strings in your life it just didn't matter because now it's like i'm accepted by my heavenly father and from that point on i just um i never had to question god if you love me 
He put a revelation in my spirit that I was completely loved and accepted by Him. So I then go on to attend uh, School of Supernatural Ministry, which is uh, sort of a Bible school here that they had in Austin a few years ago. And through that school, I just learned so much more about the kingdom of God and kingdom thinking, and kingdom culture. And I had the opportunity to go on two mission trips, both of them to Guatemala with the Austin Kingdom Academy, which is a school of supernatural ministry. And I learned so much from not just the classes and, and the students who were just equally hungry for God, but on those international mission trips, which my first one that I went on was in 2011. I got to go to Guatemala City, and my world was just opened up to see how different cultures, different people, we have brothers and sisters across the world who are just hungry for the presence of God, hungry for more of God, just like I was. And the experiences that I had, the miracles that I saw, I remember, the first time I went to Guatemala, there was a woman who came and she shared her testimony afterwards that after we prayed for her, she was walking through a prayer line and when she got right in front of me, she couldn't stop laughing. She, the Holy Spirit came upon her with this holy laughter. So here's this woman having an experience with the Holy Spirit similar to what I had had a year prior, simply just through impartation, just releasing what God had put inside of my life. And, uh, another mission trip that I went on with Global Celebration, that was in December of 2011. I went to Nicaragua, also a very beautiful nation in Central America. And I got to see um, a young girl who's to almost totally deaf, doing sign language just to communicate. And we got to see her ears open supernaturally. So I'm going on these mission trips and I'm seeing God doing all these miracles. And I'm saying, God, I want this to change the way I see life. I want it to change and upgrade me in my capacity to believe you and step out in you and step out for you. And in 2012 is when I took that step through a series of prophetic words that I had received. I knew that God had called me to prophetic ministry, that I would teach his word with a prophetic unction and then signs and wonders would follow me. These are the words that um, awesome leaders in the body of Christ, people who never met me, had spoken over my life. So I always knew that serving God um, ministering was something that he called me to do it was just a matter of when and 2012 for me as I was transitioning out of my career in the IT industry was the time that the Lord just revealed to me to um, pursue the things that he had imparted into my life so the first two years after transitioning out of uh, my professional career I really just spent that with the Lord I was hidden away with him in the secret place and Basically what that means is I spend a lot of time praying and worshiping and being in God's word and listening to what he had to say and just learning how to wait on him. And I know that sounds uh, maybe a little bit different to people like, what do you mean when you wait on God? You just wait on him. You learn patience. You learn to connect with his heartbeat. You learn not to be impatient. You learn not to be in a hurry. You learn to yield your life, your time, your dreams, your plans, your agendas, yield everything to God. So that was a very interesting process. I could probably write a book about it someday of all that I experienced in that waiting period. Then about uh, 2015, April of 2015, I am um, two and a half years now into this transition. I just hear the Lord say, stop for the one, go out into all the world and make disciples of the nations. And he really wanted me to actively start carrying out right here where I live, the message that he's given me of kingdom culture revival, carrying the love of God, carrying the joy of the Lord letting people know that Jesus did come to die for them. He doesn't hold their sins against them. He doesn't hold their trespasses against them. So as I started to do this, one of the most uh, mirac miraculous things that I, I've seen, I've seen a lot of miracles and every one of them, they're all special to me. One of the most amazing ones that I saw was in May of 2015 at the mall where I prayed for a young girl that was in a wheelchair because of a hip condition. And right there within a matter of minutes, she's totally healed, all pain is gone, and she gets up out of her wheelchair. I just thought, that was so incredible. It's just God fulfilling His word, His promises, backing up what He said He would do. I went on the rest of the 2015. I saw uh, a young man completely deaf. He was healed. He could hear sound. I saw a woman totally filled with arthritis and gout. 
and, and the Holy Spirit came upon her and gave her a total overhaul and healed her uh, of all these ailments that she had in her body. And she was just so grateful for God's goodness in her life. So that's been my story. That's been my journey. And now I'm really excited about the next phase where the Lord is showing me to step out fully in full-time ministry and let people know what God is doing here in Austin and what he wants to take across the world. And he wants you to know that no matter your past, no matter your story, no matter your history, God wants to use you. God loves you. He accepts you and he wants to use you. So my story, I pray, will be for God's glory. That people would see that you could start out in darkness, in brokenness. And when you have that born again experience with God, it comes with God's grace. It comes with the faith of God. It comes with the love of God. And there's always more. God is always going to pour out more of his spirit upon us and fill us and use us. And he's always beckoning us to trust him, to step out in a deeper place, to get out of the boat, if you will, just like Peter did, to trust him keeping our eyes on him. So I'm gonna take a minute just to thank everyone who's been a part of my story, my parents, my siblings, my family, my pastors, spiritual fathers, spiritual parents, uh, intercessors, people who've just believed in me and always spoken the call of God over my life and reinforced it and affirmed me and just challenged me and encouraged me to keep on going because I'm still standing here today because of the body of Christ. I'm still walking what God has called me to do. So if you want to know more about my testimony about this ministry, I invite you to go to my website, shalapiosilver.com. That's S-O-L-A-P-E-O-S-O-B-A.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram with the same name. All that information will be on my website. I thank you for listening to this testimony. And right now, I just want to bless you. I just want you to remember that Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, that you would be full of everlasting life, eternal life, immortal life. Be blessed in Jesus' name.